Today on Logan Lee's Adventure, we live the local life in Copenhagen. That means a lot of delicious Nordic food, aesthetically pleasing design, and a shared mutual love for books as we shop around the historical city center like a true Dane. This is Naville, which is such a beautiful spot along the canals for different cafes, restaurants, and all of these colorful buildings all along here. Look at the reflection in the water too. This waterfront area of Nyhaven dates all the way back to 1670 when a plan to connect the market with the sea sprouted taverns and brothels that served a heavy footfall of sailors and merchants. It can't get any more iconic than this walkway all along this canal. The colorful houses just pop up into your eyes whenever the sun sets on them. Look at that. I mean, I don't think I'll ever get tired of this view. Like, it's just along with like all the ships that you can see. There's so many different eye-catching things all along Nathan here. Once a busy port, the harbor's commercial activity continued until it was all but abandoned after the Second World War. The mid-1960s was when they saw a regeneration program here that got the party started all over again. I just love strolling about the city. Like, I can just walk endlessly here in Copenhagen. It's perfect for pedestrians. This is the public library. This is crazy. This is the Norport public library. And the public library, I've never seen a public library so beautifully made in my life. Like, I used to hang out in libraries as a kid. Like, every single Thursday, my mom would drop me off after school because she had to work late. So, the library kind of raised me on Thursday evenings in Toronto. So, but I mean, my public library growing up was not like this. This is like a luxury bookstore. And the books that they have here are gorgeous. Even the architecture of the public library here is phenomenal. I mean, what? I'm flabbergasted. Copenhagen is just taking my senses to the next level. How everyone just leaves their prams and strollers here because you're not allowed to bring it up. It's like a pram parking going up and exploring all the levels of this library. Goodness. I, I literally feel like I'm in a luxury bookstore and not a public library. Like, how, how are you telling me this this nice? I mean, I would pay really high taxes too if my libraries are like this. Like, come on. Uh, jokes, I already pay really high taxes if my libraries are not like this. <laughs> Such a cool space. It's a bookstore and a cafe combined. So in the back of the cafe, there's all this beautiful books, beautiful collections curated. And then the front, is the cafe and the cafe you can actually work from but no laptop policy from 12 to 3 that's all otherwise it's a really really cozy nook of the city i love that i get to be back in copenhagen and discovering places like this that i just missed the first time around so this place is called oh, it's a literature bar One of the many things that I love about this city is that Copenhagen has so many bookstores all around the city. Like literally I can do book hopping all day, every day here. And there's so many wide selections between wow. Danish and English books.
This is Arnold Busk, which is one of the biggest bookstores in Copenhagen, and it is gorgeous. I mean, look at the building itself, smack middle of everything, easy to get around to and have everything in stock. I can hang out here all day and I just have extra time. Cinnabur, which has such a well curated collection of different books, lifestyle objects. They have books on graphic design, on photography, art, basically everything that I love. And of course, it's in a very cozy, kind of like underground spot just around the corner from the Round Tower. Don't mind me, I'm going to take you through all my favorite bookstores that I'm going to be discovering in Copenhagen. I mean, this city. Great for books. Gotta discover them all. I guess my adventures today has become more and more just about exploring the different design scene in Copenhagen. I mean, as we all know, the Danes' innate sense of style and long history of homegrown design talent make Copenhagen a true world leader when it comes to retail. I'm in the Axel Eric Gatto store of Copenhagen and the store design, beautiful. Products, of course, Axel Eric Gatto, already beautiful. But I'm loving how they design the stores. Concrete has its own identity here. A pop of blue. I'm probably the only one who's going into like stores just for the architectural details. <laughs> but I love the interior design here. So whether it's homeware and furniture by industry luminaires such as Gior Janssen and Gubi Olsen or innovative fashion from a new generation including Legends and Stein Goya, there are so many things covered here for new threads and house revamps. And of course, no trip to Copenhagen would be complete without a browse of the iconic Danish furniture just in antique house, shops, and auction house all over the city. I mean, if anything, just set aside some time in Copenhagen just to window shop or to actually shop because the retail and design of this city will knock you out with its curated collections. This is New Mags. New Mags is basically a fine luxury bookstore, magazine store. It had very highly curated items here. Basically, everything that I would love in my own personal library. Someone want to build me this and also donate all these books to me? Be very much appreciated. Yeah, I love the collection that they have here. And you're free to like go through them, explore each one. This huge one. This whole wall here. Give me everything. Give me everything right now. Okay, I have some copies like the Saint Tropez and the Toulouse, but give me everything else. Come on, come on. If you can fit in my luggage, I'm coming back to the Netherlands. Speaking of great interior design stores or stores that are great interior wise with wonderful interior design things is Arquette. I mean Arquette you know is like Scandinavian through and through sure headquarters based the studios is based in Stockholm but you know still Scandinavian design and the store here in Copenhagen is stunning. It's like bigger than any of the other Arquette stores I've ever been to before. And they have just so many beautiful knickknacks. This 
swear I'm gonna get myself another suitcase and bring all this home with me. Now we're at the Book Trader. The Book Trader is this hodgepodge of pre-loved, pre-used books and some rare books fine too, so you can have to sort things out. There's English sections. Pretty cool, it's like this little lower elevated, well, lower, not elevated spot. <laughs> and there's so many good books here. Yeah, I love this. This is like my part-time hobby, aside from like cafe hopping, is bookstore hopping. I just found out that the selection here, everything is like two euros. It's on sale. So getting myself some more books. Don't know if they're gonna fit in my luggage, but uh, I'm gonna make them fit. I'm definitely carrying it on the plane no matter what. I mean, two euros per book. <laughs> oh, I wasn't kidding. The book trader is where it's at. Look how many read. I honestly do not know how I'm gonna fit this and bring this home with me, but this is all books. It's hardcover too, so this is a little heavy. Um, it's, gonna, it's gonna cost a pretty penny to bring all this home in my luggage with me, but yeah, it is worth it. Maybe I'll just walk on to the plane with it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm happy with my haul though. Someone tell me the secret to Copenhagen's just beautifully designed interior stores. Like, I just want to keep on shopping. I didn't even plan on shop today around the capital, but here I am popping into so many different stores because they're so coolly designed. Shopping here is not just like popping in, grabbing a sweater or something. It's a whole experience. Ooh. And then, they already know how to get my heart with books, especially local, about the local culture. But look at this the interior design of the store. It is beautiful in here. From the green to the splash of blue and orange around. Someone needs to tell me and explain to me why does Copenhagen have so many epic bookstores and book cafes? Like, can we bring this back to where I live, please? Because this is Paladin Bog and Cafe, which means Paladin's Book and Cafe. It's part book cafe. So upstairs is this beautiful area with like all these books that you can sit with your coffee and pastry in and then downstairs are multiple rooms like labyrinth of books upon books of antique books and I absolutely love it here like it just something about being amongst this and this feels like home to me no matter where I am in the world it's just so cozy it just makes me feel so at peace and i love flipping through books i mean i think i'm the only one who like buys book loads on holiday as souvenirs to bring home even though i can get it at home but i just i just love the experience of books so much and i love that the danish capital has so many of these spaces for 10 kroners that's like pennies in euros
we're having a dinner at Dada Restaurant, which is the restaurant in St. Petri, our hotel that we're staying in. And Dada is all about sustainable food and using ingredients that promote sustainability around the world. This is the full tasting menu, which we're gonna go and do. This is one of our starters, which is a cold mushroom broth and apparently has a strong umami taste to it. Ooh, very strong. Nice though. Mm, this is so good. It's literally it kind of tastes like concentrated mushrooms. how little these muscles are. This is macro. The presentation is beautiful. Oh yeah, it's kombucha. It's a beef tartare on like a pastry with some tomatoes on top and a gel made out of saffron. I think I will just pop the whole thing into my mouth. So this course is a dehydrated carrot and it actually tastes like beef jerky like it has the same texture as it and this is smoked butter whipped up as the sauce so it adds to the beef jerkiness To end our eight courses at Dada, we have blackberry sorbet and milk cream and wild pickled berries. Looks good. Mmm. Like an explosion of freshness. Literally forest bathing in my mouth. And you can taste the red wine too, but it's subtle enough. This is only part two of our Copenhagen adventure, so be sure to check out for more fun in the Danish capital in my next vlog. And in the meantime, leave me a comment below, hit subscribe, and give this video a like.